Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Prime Potty. I have the biggest smile on my face today because not only do I have a uh, an Essendon footballer, who I'm a big fan of, in the same room as me, it's also the start of the footy season. We're recording this on a Thursday and, uh, and round one is literally a few hours away. Ben Hobbs, how are you, my friend? Good to have you on the potty. I'm good, Prime. Thanks for having me. I'm super keen for this. Mate, I... Uh, I just can't wait because it's kind of crept up on us. I feel like a little bit like maybe not for you. You you're obviously uh, you know involved in the in the footy circles. For me, it feels like it's just crept up uh, out of nowhere. But I'm super excited to watch uh, Richmond Carlton tonight. Who do you reckon is going to get the job done? Uh, I reckon the Tigers will be too strong tonight. But uh, yeah, the Blues will be really good this year. 100%. That's an interesting call. I think. Few new recruits for the Tigers uh, are going to be unveiled tonight. What do you reckon about them? Yeah, I reckon they're great. Good pickups. Um, both are already close and know how each other play, so mm. they're going to be pretty dangerous. We we're talking about it today. They're a little bit of a like expansion team kind of just like horde. They've just pulled in. You know, they've got Prestia, they've got uh, you know Taranto, Hopper, a few of the expansion club uh, kind of players. What's the go there? Is, is Richmond kind of uh, like, is everyone trying to go to Richmond? Like, wh- why does people move from like GWS and Gold Coast to Richmond? They must be. They, like, obviously a lot Lynch of... Lynch su- as well, obviously, as yeah, well. Yeah, a lot of success lately. And obviously, they've still got their, a pretty good list. So, everyone's probably jumping on trying to win a premiership. But Should we get them to the Dons? Yeah. We might not get them to the Dons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get them. Um, but nah, that, that'll be good to watch tonight. I'm very excited. Mate, it's, uh, it's great to have you on the pod. I want to start off with a little bit of an elevator pitch. Who are you? 15 to 30 seconds. Give me a little bit of a brief overview of your life and, and who you are. Um, wow. Uh, 15 seconds. Let's do it. Um, so obviously playing footy at the moment, which is taking up a lot of my life. Um, living with two mates, which has been good to take my mind off footy. Um, parents live three hours away um, in Horsham, so don't see them a whole lot. But um, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, what about outside of footy? What, are you, what, are you, what keeps your your mind, I guess, balanced from the footy? Because it can be quite consuming at times, um, you know, playing footy and being an athlete. 100%. Um, I've been, like, loving my, like, vinyls and records lately. Nice. I'm obsessed. It's a bad, it's an expensive obsession, but <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, so I got a new, got a new setup for Christmas. Mum just, I didn't even ask for it. Mum just got it for me and now I've just been to the record store like once a week getting about two or three so they're adding up (laughs) um but that um i love my nba watch it every day um yeah that's pretty much keeping me going um who's your nba team the lakers nice i'm the same how do you reckon like we've had a very very slow start to the year in fact i think that we were in the Western Conference, 15th. And if you know NBA, there's only 15 mm. teams. <laughs> so yeah. we weren't doing very well. I know. Uh, what do you reckon um, is going to be in store for the back end of the season? I'm not the most like loyal fan. When <laughs> at the start of the year, they were shocking. And I just, I just gave up on him, did I just you? thought, oh, nah, this LeBron's getting old. And then he just showed me again, like, it's ridiculous. And then now they're coming back. So D-Lo I'm, back in the team. Back Russ on is him. gone. Back on him. I started to go with Cleveland a bit. <laughs> but, but I'm back on him. So Lakers, yeah. I think uh, a bit of NBA chat. I wanted LeBron to have that homecoming and go back to Cleveland. I kind of wanted that a little bit um, because they just had a crazy good team. You know, Donovan Mitchell and that just dominating. But it's good to see the Lake show uh, back I think we're rising. I think we're sitting ninth or eighth at the moment in the Western Conference, which is very exciting. It's going to be tough, but mm. we'll be up. I'd be scared if I was number one seed in the West because, um, yeah, they're, they're a very good t- team for rated so low. Now let's get into uh, a bit of your journey into football. Where'd you go to school? Ballarat Clarendon College. Mm-hmm. So, good school. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good school. There's yeah. been a um, fair few good footballers come out of there. But um wasn't really a, like trying to be go to a football school it's just more so to I was going to go all the way to Melbourne for boarding school um but I was year eight so the end of year eight so mum and dad thought nah three hours is a long way yeah, so we'll enough. send you pretty much halfway but got a lot out of that um played for the rebels and then um yeah did all the Vic country Vic country stuff and then yeah lucky enough to get picked up and stay in Melbourne which was great was that always your ambition to play AFL yeah it was I played um tennis and basketball um, tennis kind of gave up about 14 and then it was just basketball and footy 
And I was just too short, mate. And then, <laughs> like... What are you, you're listed at 183? Yeah. That's just six foot? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's probably pretty generous. So. <laughs> you tell that to girls on a night out, I'm definitely six foot. Yeah, <laughs> six foot. Like, nah. Sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. You're not. Um, but, yeah. So, now just footy and loving it. Yeah, beautiful. And, um, you know, you finished your schooling journey. You got picked up by the, the Mighty Dons, pick 13, I believe, in the 2021 draft. How was, uh, I guess, your feelings and emotions? You were at draft night? Yeah, I was. And uh, and how was that? You had your family, obviously, around and um, got picked up by the Dons. That, yeah, that was a crazy experience. Um, I had, like, I was probably one of the only blokes there on draft night that didn't know where they were going. Yeah. Um, most of them kind of already knew. Um, and you kind of have to know, like, where you're going in that scenario. Like, mm. it's got to be, yeah. You had to keep the kids relaxed. It was such an anxious experience. But, you know... It worked out so well for me and it made my night um, great and my dad and whole family's Essendon, but I wasn't. So. Really? So your whole family's Essendon and you're a tiger? Yep. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> wrong wrong coloured stripe or something. That is so weird. <laughs> yeah, but um, they were over the moon and so was I. That's yep. interesting. I'm very similar in my family. My old man's a cat. So is my mum and so is my sister. And I turned out to be a Dons fan. That's I don't really weird. know how that happened. It's not going to happen with my kids, I tell you that much. They're <laughs> going to all be little Dons fans. Yeah, good, good. Uh, I think that's the way it's going to go. Um, now, when you get picked up, obviously, you were a Tigers fan. Do you stay a little bit of a Tigers fan? Or are you all Bombers now? Um, I don't know. I reckon Tigers were the most chirpy too. So really? When we played, when we played the Tigers, they were, they were good. So. Indigenous round? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were into me, which was good. Um, and they gave us a bit of a touch up, so I wasn't really a fan of them after that. But I love the players that um, love the players they have, and you know, like their coach and what they've done. So obviously, it's still a bit of a soft spot there. But nah, nah stop. <laughs> Who was the most chirpy out in the field in Indigenous round? Uh, I was playing as a half forward. All the backs, uh, you know, all the backs were into me. It was good. I actually enjoyed it, and such a good experience. The crowd. Um, yeah, love playing them. Incredible crowd. Um, it's always packed out. Essendon are very lucky we get to play in Anzac Day, Indigenous round. Um, you know, we've got a heat, whole heap of rounds, which is super exciting at the G. What was your highlight for the 2021 season? You end up playing 17 games, um, featured in a lot of games. What was your highlight there? Um, obviously, my debut was special. Um, whole family there. Um, the whole build up to that was crazy. Um, then dream time was great. Anzac day was great. I was very lucky my first year to play them, but I think the Sydney game in round 16, we beat them and we like, weren't like, That's right. that was unbelievable. That was game. a huge game at the G. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I remember. that was probably my highlight. Um, the Hawks game as well. COVID. We had like seven players out with COVID and <laughs> all these boys were getting called up last minute and yeah, got over them, got over them too. So it was good. That was, uh, I remember the Swans game being an absolute killer. I think I remember Stringer kicking like a bag. I think he kicked like three or four. He played very, very well. And Heine um, at the end. Heine yeah. at the end, that's right. Did yeah. a big celebration yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I guess, who was probably one of your, your greatest mentors in that first year at the Dons? Uh, it was probably Dice Heppel. Um, I lived with, him, lived with him for the first three weeks at the club um, until I moved in with Pat Voss. So that was great. Um, yeah, him and his now fiance Kate were fantastic with me, and like just living with him, understanding what he does behind the scenes, and and like he was the captain. So if I'm close with the captain, I felt like I could like be close with all the boys. Yeah, 100. that was kind of my mindset. But he was great, and I'm still really close with him now. Awesome. And what was the biggest shift for you in terms of professionalism? Um, because obviously, you know, you come from country town, country footy, um, and then you've moved into playing this professional standard with the captain of the football club what are the biggest changes that you saw um i think i'm still like trying to get better every day with professionalism it's all different um it, but it's different with each like with different guys some guys yeah. are really really like um like really careful with what they eat others you know it doesn't really matter it's all how your body works and if you've got energy and sleep but it's just being consistent with like diet just keep the three things diet um sleep and just hydration that's what i try to do and if i get those three then i think my footy just um i'm just confident Mm, i think that your footy ends up taking care of itself um sometimes if you can get your mind right so if it works for you um you need to be really dialed in with your diet your nutrition all that type of stuff your training 
then it really, really helps your confidence in games. 100%. Yeah, mm. I agree. There's plenty that happened last year with the Dons. We've got a new coach in. Uh, how exciting has the preseason been? Uh, a few new players and a new coach as well. Yeah, it's been great. Um, bit of a refresher. Um, felt like it was a pretty long year last year. Um, and, you know, it was like publicized everywhere about it but i'm um, just tough. yeah it was, tough, it was tough i'm glad it's we've moved on and um yeah new coach brad's been great um came came in straight away and just um spoke about the standards and and where we want to get to as a club and um like essendon is a very successful club so we want to get back to that um few new recruits lige um lige Asadis is he's going to be a good player Super um and alwyn davy as well he's He's actually playing. That's been announced. Um, we've got a bit nervous there. But no, no, has he been. has. It's all right. I've seen it all over the um, yeah. all over the feed. I yeah. think his brother uh, gave him the yeah. guernsey. Yeah, he did. So he'll be good to watch this weekend. And um, yeah, that's a good good place at the moment. Uh, who's the most exciting player to look out for this year? Who's been tearing it up on the track in the preseason? Um, I think Dill Dylan Shiel looks like he's in, um, he's in good nick. Great nick. Yeah. He looks unbelievable. He's in good nick every year. Yeah. Though. We always get there. He is. He's in good nick. I don't know. He's like genetically crazy. Oh. And he and he does everything right. He's ultra professional. Yeah. Um who else looks good? Even Dice looks like he's in mm. for a good year. Mm -hmm. Um Peter Wright and new pickups. Um what about Sammy. Sammy Wiedemann. Yeah, he looking good. He'll be good. Yeah, so I'm excited for him. so the key forwards, hopefully they can work well together. But yeah. everyone's, you know, everyone says everyone's looking good this time of year. But oh, mate, we'll see this Sunday. The articles that come out at the start of the year, mate, tearing it up the track, tearing it up, mate. I'm not. I won't listen to anything until round one happens. So you guys will all be listening to this on Tuesday next week after round one has happened. So hopefully, um, we're not lying about anything yeah. that's <laughs> going to go on here. I know. Oh, very very funny. Uh, have you got any uh special people in your life any relationships at the moment or are you single pringle i'm single mm -hmm. yep. how's that yeah it's all right um i feel like yeah sometimes you just want to cuddle throughout the season <laughs> <laughs> in the winter in when the winter when it's two degrees outside. yeah but um nah i'm nah i'm all good at the moment yeah. just uh doing my own thing does that keep you more focused do you reckon um yeah yeah no i don't know i just feel like um when the right one comes along it'll be it'll be good it'll be right it'll make me better yeah Good call. Good call. <laughs> I always like asking that question just to see yeah, no, if, uh, if there's any... Because a lot of people get uh, in very complicated situations. They're not sure if they're going to say anything or not. So yeah. <laughs> leave that I'll as keep, it is. I'll keep it as that, yeah. <laughs> uh, injuries at the moment. You've unfortunately done your calf. So you're going to be playing round one, um, but, uh, but you were tearing up the track before that. Yeah, it was... I hadn't missed a training session until the calf, and it was a bit of a weird one. Um so yeah, that sent me back for about five weeks. Mm. So that's a pretty long calf, but um, they're just being cautious with me. It's a long season. So I'm playing this weekend in the VFL. If you want to get down to the hangar, well, they're probably, it's already, it's done. already done, but we'll get down. Hopefully they get down. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a bit of match fitness and then hopefully I can get, get back involved with the boys. Yeah. Round two would be perfect. That'd be good. Um, to have you back out there in our stacked midfield. Mm. It's going to be a very nice midfield. Um, I was watching Shearley in that, Suns game he just looked like he was absolutely tearing it up we've got uh we're talking about it off air we've got a lot of good midfielders in there um do you think that the midfield mix is going to work really well this year yeah I think it will um Setterfield adds a bit of a bigger body um mm -hmm. we're all around my size and yeah, my I, weight so yeah. that'll be good but um we all have different strengths um Dill and Zach are elite at that spill ball um and yeah. like getting in your vision when you got your head over it um and Caldwell's obviously a bit of a bull mm -hmm. um so I think we've got a good mix in there. And then there's a few other blokes that can um, really play well in there. Sam Durham and Nick Martin are running really well yeah. through the wings. So, um, no, nah, it's exciting. Awesome. Going back to your injury, do you reckon that there was anything that you were doing or anything that you could have done to prevent it? Or was it one of those things that just kind of came out of nowhere and you're like, you don't really know how it happened? Yeah, I don't really know. I kind of um, changed direction and took off really hard and I kind of felt it and I thought it was a cramp. So I, I, I kept running yeah. and then a half time of the, like this intra club and I was like, I can't put, point my foot. I did it once as well. I think I was like around your age of 17, yeah. no, not 17 or 19, but I was around, you know, a bit younger yeah. and um, it felt like a corky. I thought that someone like need me in the back and I remember turning around 
by no one there. Yeah, <laughs> nah. Oh, no, nah, yeah. it's not good. Nah, I kept, I good. did the same, kept trying to run it out, but it's a terrible feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's not good. No. Nah. How, how's your recovery and everything been going? Just, just been smashing the gym, smashing rehab. Yeah, it's been good. I got into swimming, um, and now, oh, nice. now I'm gonna continue that. I reckon through the season, keep building on my fitness. I might try swim once, twice a week. Um, I enjoyed that. A couple of ear infections later, but. <laughs> so we're just touching on kind of doing swimming keeping off legs in season how important do you find that and how important are you going to find it this year um yeah i think it'll be great for me especially because i missed five weeks before mm. the season yeah um fair bit of match play so i've been like so blowing that much in this <laughs> <laughs> i've been struggling swimming's a completely different fitness hey yeah it is like, so different it is but i think it'll be good for me um, even just to get in the water, get the body moving as well early in the mornings. And then, um, yeah, boxing as well and yoga. It's pretty much my three things that I'll focus on throughout the year. Yeah, 100%. Guys, if you're out there and you are looking for some in-season tips and tricks and way to train, make sure you go onto the Prime Train website and check out our AFL in-season program. It's absolutely dominating at the moment. Uh, I was only going to do 50 spots, but we ended up having like, so many people sign up. So we've just gone ballistic. I think we have 200 people on it at the moment. It's absolutely crazy. So make sure you jump onto that. You can use the code podcast to get 20% off as well, which is just a crazy good discount, isn't it? Hobart? That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to pick up any supplements or any of that type of stuff as well, make sure you go and check that out on the website. Still use the code podcast to get 20% off. We're going to have apparel in in the next probably month. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following on everything because it will be out uh, there, I'm going to send you some subs as well after this be because great. I know that you love. Like, what 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 do you reckon you'll be going for? The pre workout, the creatine, probably the protein, everything, just mate. all three. I'll just get them in. Mate, I'll just tick it off. Yeah. Eh? just put it straight through. Yeah. Let's go into some season predictions. Now I know that you're a footy head, a bit like me. We love our footy, so I'm really keen to get some uh, some exciting things off. Uh, <laughs> for like Brownlow, some Coleman medal, that sort of stuff. Yep. So I'll start off. Brownlow, who do you reckon is going to get up? Uh, I reckon it'll be a tie between Andy Brayshaw like it. and Clayton Oliver. Do you think Andy Brayshaw is going to get tagged a lot this year? Yeah, he probably will. But you I've seen, he'll... yeah, I reckon he'll be right. Okay. Um, I reckon Sarong will get him open and they'll th work well together. I think Sarong's going to have a very, very... He could be a smoky. ...good year. I think he might be a Brownlow smoky. I reckon he could be Brownlow All-Australian smoky. He's a gun. I like it. Yeah. I really like it. I, I already um, the smoky then. I gave it away. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We can go, we can go to that. I've got a couple more, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm predicting... I've really liked Christian Petrarca's uh, yeah. off-season vlogs. Yep. So <laughs> I'm, I just know how hard he's been working. Chef track. Does, do you reckon everyone works that hard? Oh, mate. He's a grinder, bro. It's unbelievable. He loves it. Yeah, that's crazy. No one, like, there's no secret, really, why yeah. why he's so good. He's a brown loaf for me, I reckon. Yeah, it's a good pick. Hopefully he does a TikTok on it. It's a safe pick, it. but... <laughs> <laughs> you want, do you want a little bit? No, no, no. Okay, well, let's good. go for a Smokey, then. You reckon yeah. Sarong? Uh, yeah, him or Chad Warner. Oh, damn. Yeah. Damn, I Ch want to do Chad. Chad's, yeah, he's good. Mate, he's a gun. Yeah, he's a gun. Dropbox Warner, we love him. Yeah. Um, what else? There's another. There was another Smokey that I was thinking of. Maybe uh, I was thinking maybe Tom Mitchell. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I'm thinking new club. I just reckon he's going to rack in that midfield. There was an article that said, um, or oh, like something like he's not going to rack up that. This he's gone year. forward a little bit. I saw him. He was forward at Hawks a lot. Yeah. Saw him take a couple of marks in there, Pracky. He could kick a couple of snags and Ooh. he could get it. See, yeah. that could be... He, yeah. he might just have 30 and kick three a couple yeah. of times. Uh, I don't know. He's he's pretty good. He's professional too. He is. Yeah. He loves it. So yeah. he's actually super fit. Like yeah. runs a really good 2K time. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to know everybody out no there. Prime. Yeah. <laughs> no prime. No prime, Doesn't matter for me, mate. I play yeah. local footy, so it doesn't, no one cares oh, about well. your 2K. I don't care about how many beers you drink yeah. after the game, unfortunately. How do you go with that? <laughs> Terrible, unfortunately. <laughs> I was, couldn't yeah. scale a beer to save my yeah. life, unfortunately. Uh, let's go Coleman next. Who do you reckon is going to um, kick her back? Probably one of the um, big boys at Carlton. Kernow or Mackay? Yeah, I don't know. I Probably Kernow again. He looks good. Who else is there? I reckon the Tomahawk. He's just always there. Well, he's going to miss the first round or he's two, sure? I think. Yeah. Oh. So well, I'm like, I back him in. No, nah, I back him in. What about Jezza? 
Yeah, it's a big one too. Yeah. There's some gun key forwards. I think I'm going to go Kerno as well. I think that he's just primed for a great yep. season. Yep. He's he's a freak of nature. So yep. I think I'm going to roll with him. What about a Smokey for the Coleman? Ooh. I'll go Tom Papley. Nice. Small forward. Someone it's said it's the year for smalls. Of, yeah, unheard of. I reckon that could be a good one. Good. Yeah. Do you want to hear my Smokey? Yeah. Now five. Yeah. Gone but, forward. Yeah. Freo are going to be like when you pick the common, you have to think not of the best forward, but the best team that's actually going to get the ball to the Oh, forward. yeah. They'll get it down to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'll be exciting to watch. Yeah. It'd be good. I, I'm really keen to see five back, and fingers crossed he has an injury free year. Yeah. I'll be very keen on that. Rising star, I think that this one's pretty easy. Mm. It is. Everyone says Ashcroft. Okay. He's going to be a gun. But? But, like, he po- possibly could, but everyone's going to say him. Mm-hmm. So I might go. I'm going to go a couple. I reckon either Sam Darcy. Like it. Or Finn Callahan. Very good. I think good. they've got a year of experience. Um, they'll be playing regularly. Um, but Ashcroft looks bloody good. You had a round 14 nomination mm-hmm. for the Rising Star last year. Yep. Were I you did. a chance to win it, do you reckon? Nah. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> um, but no, nah, it was good to get that opportunity and get that. It's good. Yeah. Mm. Mate. Well, you had a great year. Thanks, mate. For me, Rising Star... I think he's going to play every single game. I think that's really important. And that's Harry Sheasel. Mm. The Cheezel. The Cheezel looks good too. I think Some good kids. Cam McKenzie looks good too. Yeah, really good kid from yeah. the Hawks. Yeah. yeah. Some some really exciting kids yeah, coming it's through. Good, isn't it? I really like... Yeah, I really liked your picks. I haven't heard those yeah. those names thrown around too much. Everyone just says Ashcroft. Because you've got to play under 10 games. Of course. I think. So, yeah, they're both under there. Mm-hmm. Sam Darcy looks good. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah, I actually met his brother the other day down at Gosh's Paddock, younger brother. So weird. Six four, anyway. Six yeah, he's like six foot ten, yeah, and he's right. like fifteen. Yeah, that's... I'm looking at. He's like, <laughs> he said to me, he goes, oh, "I'm Sam Darcy's brother." Like, I can tell, mate. Yeah. You look the exact same. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the exact same. They're huge. They've got the same genes, all of them. How about ninth spot? Mm. It's a tough one. I know. That is a very tough question. Um. So I'm gonna say someone's gonna slide out. <laughs> <laughs> so you set me up the fail. <laughs> oh. But it could be someone like like it could be a yeah. giant or something, right? Yeah. That's sliding up this year. I don't think it will I'm be. I'm trying to think of the teams that are just outside the eight. Yeah. It's it's a difficult one. I think that I'm gonna go with maybe like Port Adelaide. Yep. Could be around that mark. Um. Or maybe the, I don't think the Tigers are going to slide. Nah, I I don't think the Pies are going out either. They look good. Oh, I'll say the Giants. Giants yeah. sliding up. <laughs> Just look after yeah. them. That's a yeah. cop out. Yeah, that was a, that's a huge cop out. <laughs> Biggest riser this year. Now it doesn't have to be from fifteenth to third, or like the like the Pies did last year. Um, you know, it could be anyone. I guess could. Hopefully the Dons. That's a really good answer. Hopefully the Dons, I believe we can. Um, Hopefully get some consistency. And yeah, we get back up there a bit. Mm. Injury for a year as well. Yeah. Always helps. 100%. I think. Yeah. I'm very excited to see how the Dons do this year. Very, very excited. I was going to do Biggest Fall, but on this podcast, we only like to do positive things. And I don't like saying like Biggest Fall or like... There was another wooden spoon. We're not going to do those picks. No, we're not. Because we're not media people. No. And we don't, we're not about putting other people down. No, we're not. Mm -hmm. Not at all. No. No. So I'm going to skip those ones. (laughs) You agree with that? Yeah. See, we don't, we don't want to create. It's good. That's safe. But like, we're not doing it. No, we don't want to create, um, you know, I've got friends that play for the Hawks. I've got friends that plays for North. I've got friends that plays for Crows. So you're saying they're the. Well, 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 for most other people's predictions, they have been there. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I don't want to predict anything like that. Good man. Top four. I'm going to say uh, Melbourne, Brisbane. This is excluding us. Essendon. Yes. Okay. Because um, we'll be there. Because like, I'm not going to not say I'm a team. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. I f- yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Melbourne, Brisbane, Cats, Swans. Mm, nice. It's pretty safe. But like, I... F- pies? The Pies go mm. out? Maybe. Mm. I think that their recruits are too good to go out. 
So you're having them ahead of the others or you're having them fourth? I think I, I think I see the Swans slide a little bit. I think I see them slide to fifth and I see the Pies in the top four. Chatty Warner's fine. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and let's go grand final this year. Um, I hate saying this because like I want to be there. Yeah. But... It's a very hard question to ask in... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But like this is... Every answer is because if we're not there. Yep. Which I'm hoping we are. 100%. Um, I think... Like, cats just keep winning. They're going to give themselves another chance. Yeah. And I think I think Brisbane, they've picked up some guns. Jeez, I think, they've got a good side. Uh, but then Melbourne too. I don't know. They'll be out of those three. And, mm. uh, and us. Yeah. Interesting. Gee whiz. It's going to be an exciting it's grand final. Be, yeah. And then... Who, who wins it? Because... The Lions have a great side, but they do not play well. Or the, sorry, they haven't historically played very well at the MCG. Is that an issue? <clears throat> um, oh, I think yeah, it has been, mm-hmm. but I don't think I think this might be their year. Do you think the recruiting so many Melbourne players could actually help them? Oh, well, Dunks has played a lot of footy at the G. At the G, one hundred percent. Um, Gunston. Yes. He's, played, he's big, played a lot he's, of footy. He's played a lot of footy in finals. So who knows? Some people have said Gunston for Coleman. Yep. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That, yeah, he can kick. That's kick a sure. lot of goals. Mm. Yeah, he probably does. He probably plays deeper than, than Hipwood and they, I guess they lost McStay as well. Yeah, you're right. Who knows? So Gunston probably kicks a lot. It's going to be an exciting year, Prime. I'm so excited. Yep. I'm so excited <laughs> for the year. It's going to be so good. Um, guys... If you haven't gone on and checked out Whoop, make sure that you do. And then also Manscaped as well. If you guys use my code PRIME20, you will get another 20% off. So if you haven't gone and picked up the AFL in-season program, the, the goddamn supplements, a Manscaped product, which I actually use to cut my hair pretty much every day. Not every day. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Just, yeah, it's it's actually elite. So uh, go pick up those Manscaped products and make sure you check out Whoop as well. Have you used a Whoop band before? So they're like these, um, it's basically like a, a band with like a little connective thing on it. And you, it's not like the watch face that you see. It's just like an app. But it all, so all get your sleep and stuff. Oh, elite. Yeah, sleep, right. strain. I might use the code. Oh, mate, it's so yeah. good. It's actually so good. If you guys want to pick it up, go check it out in the description. If you're an athlete, a pro athlete, or just any everyday person, then you should definitely check it out. You don't have to buy it, but please just go and check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got some Q&As from the people. Uh, Pies, Cats, round one. Who do you reckon? Cats. How many? Four points. Ooh, it's tight. It's going it's, it's to be huge. Do you reckon um, Ollie Henry's going to be in the gun? Yeah, and I think he'll kick three. Really? Yeah. And the sealer? Yeah. Imagine and, that. And the sealer. <laughs> and he shushes him. <laughs> That's what I'm predicting. Imagine that. Yeah. That would be huge. Gee whiz, I hope, um, I hope you're not listening to this on a Tuesday and that's happened. Otherwise, you're going to be a fortune teller. They're not going to like They're not going <laughs> to like They're not going like to say, don't this. make any more predictions yeah. because they're all true. Yeah. They always happen. I hope that happens. Uh, I've had a few questions from a few various punters uh, on the Snapchat and Instagram. I just said I was I was just talking with the AFL player and you probably know a lot more what's going on in the AFL than what anyone else does being in the business. Do lo- uh, Sorry, do Port have a chance of finishing in the top four from Liam? Port? Mm-hmm. Jason Horn Francis. Yeah. Um, they've been a very good side for a long time now, mm-hmm. Port, and they're hard to beat um, at Adelaide. At Adelaide. And it's an unbelievable spectacle to play there. I got lucky with that as well. It's beautiful there, isn't it's it? It's nice. What's the best ground that you've played on? Uh, the G yeah. is like, that's unbelievable. But I like the SCG. Yep. And Adelaide, Adelaide Oval with that open bit with the um, hill. Yes, yeah, that's, beautiful. That's great. Mm. Um, but every ground's in great nick. It's true. Mm. Is there any ground that you've gone on that's been a little bit like slippery underfoot or, or you haven't felt like... <laughs> you said no. <laughs> Um, you can say Hors- no. Horsham City Oval. <laughs> <laughs> Horsham City Oval. Yeah. 
No after, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good ground, but just start, uh, you know. It's a bit slippery. A bit slippery yeah. underfoot. Yeah. Not the same as the Giannetti had, probably. No, no. No. That's the same. That makes, that makes perfect sense. So, top four for Port, any chance or not? Mm, no. 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 I, I think the top teams are really hard to beat. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But you are right. It is a bit of a fortress down there um, in Adelaide. And it's the same with the teams out west as well. 100%. I reckon. Yep. Sam asks, where are the Dons finishing this year? <sighs> uh, it's a really difficult question, just quietly. Um, so you don't have to answer it like an actual number. No. Um, I think are we that, rising? Are we falling? I, yeah, I think we're definitely rising. I think all our young players are obviously getting more experience and getting more experience and getting older. Um, new game plan um, that we've all, you know, like grab with both hands and are trying to implement into our game. And then I think, yeah, our confidence will go up um, and hopefully we can improve. I'm not going to promise anyone anything, but like I'm looking forward to seeing how we go. Yeah, 100%. I think we're all very excited to see how the Dons go. Like you said before, uh, a club with a lot of historical success um, and the fans, I think, you know, we're, we're still recovering from 2012 you know and and what happened through there is is still very difficult for a lot of people to grasp but like i said we're still recovering from that um you know we lost a lot of draft picks and and it's probably you know a 20-year project almost to come back from that yep i agree well, let's see how we go mm. yep. very excited uh noah moon asks who should headline the afl grand final this year <laughs> mm. <laughs> Like perform? Yeah, who should perform? You yeah. know, like Meatloaf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, no, po that was porridge, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was porridge. <laughs> Imagine that. Meatloaf comes back. Uh, or like Dua Lipa or something. Oh, Are you a bit like um, Tom Green? Nah, I'm not like that. But, <laughs> but like, that would be pretty good. Who's your, do you have a celebrity crush? Yeah, it's the same as everyone. Margot Robbie. Yeah, so fair. She's good. Or actually like Natalie Portman. For Dude, some reason. Nice. For some reason. I don't know what it is, but like... I can see where you're going. Natural, natural beauty. <laughs> <laughs> That's your celebrity crush, Nat Portman. No. Yeah. I've That's good. That's a good one. No, Mine's no. Sandra Bullock. So... Oh, yeah. I love Sandra. Yeah. Like, there's something about it. Oh, yeah. mate. Every yeah. movie I see Sandra in, my favorite movie is uh, The Proposal with her and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Just like... You've seen No Strings Attached. Oh, don't get me started, mate. See, you just say you know, know what I mean. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that, that's a good question. So, headline this AFL grand final, I reckon it should be Morgan Wallen. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my personal, that's all I'm, I'm going to say, all right? I'd love to see You're Morgan Wallen. Way. I'd love to see him out there. I'd love like to see, to see Jua. Jua. Jua Lipa. <laughs> That'd be good. Is she one of your favourite artists? Uh, nah, not music-wise. Um, what about looks? <laughs> yeah, looks-wise, she's pretty good. But like, the weekend imagine that yeah nice that would be huge well he's just come from doing so so you know that they don't get paid to do so yeah well. zero dollars yeah. yeah 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 they'd have to get paid for i AFL. think i think they'd have to yeah fly to com yep but that would be sick <laughs> and I, I don't know let's see i don't know dual leaper and morgan wallen i think back to back it would be yep. what i'd like to see yeah just personal opinion <laughs> <laughs> so i've just been told by my producer the gra the great man keelan that there was a little bit of controversy uh, talking about who might perform at the AFL Grand Final. We had Lime Cordial uh, performing last year at the Anzac Day, and they were wearing some flamboyant uh, outfits and were maybe described as a little bit disrespectful. Mm. Um, what do you reckon about the entertainment kind of business when it comes to Anzac Day and Grand Final and that sort of stuff? Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's obviously going to be like highly criticised because so many people are watching. Um, but I didn't really hear much about the Lime Cordial situation. But Neither did I, to be honest. Nah. But I'm looking at all the articles now. As soon as I did it blow up? typed in Lime Cordial, the first thing that comes yeah. up was Anzac Day performance. Their music's good. Great music. But I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see what they were even wearing, to be honest. I was too focused, mate. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> I'm just showing, <laughs> showing him what they're wearing. Oh, wow. Oh, it's yeah. not that bad, That's is it? That's not that bad. I mean, bloody hell. Chest, Go up, chest eh? Air, chest air on the right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull it up for you guys, but that is... Uh, oh, I don't really have I an issue with yeah, that. Either do I. No, nah, I don't. Just Sometimes just... There was actually something I saw the other day. It was about like Harry Styles wearing a dress. Oh, yeah. It was Harry, like... 
Logan Paul was actually defending him and there was other people on the Logan Paul podcast who were like, like, just let people dress however the fuck that they want. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I agree. Dude, it, does, it does not worry me. Who bit. cares, no. bro? Like, if you're going to wear a bloody dress out, mate, Rock it. fucking go for it. Not many could. Like, no. not many. He can. He can. He's a Harry Styles, he's a roo. He's a roo. He's, he's a roo. He can, he can wear whatever he wants. He can wear whatever he wants. Yeah. Would you describe yourself as a roo? Nah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. He's so well media trained. I can't get anything out of him. Nah. He's actually very, very good. I actually, yeah, I'm not really trained, but I just, you know. You're, you're very you're smart. Trying to, you're setting me up. No, I didn't set you up. I remember uh, I, I've done some podcasts where they've set me up before, so I've actually... No, nah, you're um, not setting me up, but like... Um. Yeah, you're smart. Yeah, you got to be smart with what you say. You just got to be smart with what you say. A lot of the time, um, you know, we, yeah, we talk about it all the time. Do, and yeah. like, not even smart, but dude, do you feel like you're sometimes under pressure a lot, especially like when you go out in public because you've got to act a certain way and and yeah. portray a certain character. Hundred percent. It gets tough sometimes. Um, like when you like out and having a few beers and. Um, you always got to be somewhat careful, especially in Melbourne. It's huge. Yeah, it's footy, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, that's all that comes with it. You got to be, you, you know that going in. So you just yeah. got to be smart. Does it make you nervous? Not really. No. 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 Pretty just, chilled with it. Just behave, mate. Just chill. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very interesting. We've got uh, Frio making the eight from Harry. He said that there's not a lot of articles talking up Frio this year and they've They've got a pretty good side. What do you reckon about that? They'll be right. Yeah, yeah. I reckon they'll make the eight. Like we said before, out west in Adelaide, wherever you play in Sydney, it's uh, it's pretty hard to go out there. Do, do you do you find that that's very difficult traveling? What do you think that the issue is there, mate? Like last year, I was all over the place. Like lo- like didn't take my own pillow. Was like losing stuff. Mm. It was just like rattled. It's and difficult for a young player. Yeah, it is because especially your first like. Like, you do camps and stuff when you're young, but, like, traveling with the boys, like, you don't have your own room, you don't have your own, like, food, and the food, like, so much of it, I was just, like, smashing it, and I'd feel that heavy the next day. How bad is it? Yeah. What, what do you go with before a game? Like, do you eat much food or not really? I change it up every week. Yeah, I okay. used to be so structured, and it just caused, like, more, like, performance anxiety. Well, the issue is, especially playing AFL, and, and I the same when I was um, traveling for VFL, you can't get the food in that you want to get in no. because you might be getting hotel food. So there's no point that like jeopardizing your like prep. It's just, you, I just eat whatever the right amount still has the like the right nutrients in for me that I can play well, but I don't really, it's no specifics. You just got to be smart with it. Don't you like, yep. are you a superstitious person? No, nah, I no. used to be before I was drafted mm-hmm. and it like works. Like I got picked up and, but just was like, so like anxious, like off. Oh, Fuck, I didn't You're do that. Swear. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, I didn't do that right. Yeah. Like, oh shit. And I'd be thinking about it in the warm up. Now I'm just like, I'll like, just eat whatever. Once you just take that kind of like, once you change that mindset, I think of being so focused on a regimented structure, mm-hmm. you start to just relax and play footy, and that's what it's all about playing footy with your mates, and that's probably when you play your best footy. I 100%. think. Yeah, you, you can get ca- too caught up with the professional side of it in terms of like you're playing a professional game. It's just going to be the same. Like I think Guelph, like he just loves to have fun, mm. and like that's, I think he, I listened to it. He said he just like loves having fun, and, and like he used to when he was young. And I feel like you get the like you play well when you're not really thinking, not worrying about the crowd, yeah, stuff like that. Do you find that difficult when you? travel the crowd yeah mm. I, yeah i do but like as soon as i played that anzac day game every crowd was just like oh it's, yeah. it's not like that so like it i didn't really notice it too much but the whole like four and a half hour flight to perth it's hard to win over mm. there when they're flying and doing well but it's uh it's exciting to go over different state and play footy it's good yeah it is good fun mm. you pick up a lot of frequent fire points as well 100 which is always yeah. nice <laughs> well i don't know if i do like we're with Virgin, but you need to get your only like account. Yeah. Oh, then you. Yeah. Yeah. Then you pick them up and you just say, "Can you add them to my account?" And say it at the desk, and they link it up. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm missing out. You are missing out. Yeah. I'll set you up. I'll, yeah, good, I'll help you out. I'll take man. all your points just, as well. No, just give me. I'll set you up and I'll transfer all the points to myself. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let anyone do that. No. Nah. Um, I'm gonna finish off with a couple of questions. Firstly, Anzac Day, talk me through the whole, the build up the emotion the game itself talk me through it it was my third game 
Um, and I was just, I got there really early because I wanted to like kind of get there before the crowd started building, but I was building like two and a half hours before the it's game. It's crazy. And then um, I was out there for a bit and then I went inside and then the next time I ran out, 90,000 and I was a bit rattled to be honest. Yes. Like, was that when you ran out to actually play or was that the yeah, warm-ups? Yeah. Oh, like the warm-up was still like packed and then yeah. when I went back in, it was even more full and Fire I was out. like, nah, this is just ridiculous. Then we did the whole like pre-game stuff and um, I was like, I found myself legit throughout the four quarters just watching the game. I could not get involved, but I didn't <laughs> Did even you care. Have many? Nah, like nine touches. <laughs> <laughs> Why, didn't Why am I laughing, bro? I don't even... <laughs> no, no, no. Shut up. <laughs> I, I, um, I just, just Nine's not that bad. Nah, I just couldn't get near it. Simple as that. But I didn't care because it was an unbelievable game, but we lost. But um, I, I want to play in that every year. It's unbelievable. How much does that motivate you to oh. continue to play and train well? 100% it does. That and Dreamtime are the two biggest games. And if you start winning those games, it's good for the club. Um, but we're very lucky to play in both of them. Mm. Yep. Uh, someone announced themselves on the stage, Anzac Day. Ginevan mm-hmm. kicked five, mm-hmm. dominated. Um, had an interesting speech after the game. I couldn't really hear it on... <laughs> Could on, you hear it at Nah, all? I couldn't hear it on ground level for some reason. It's like a it's, weird... It'd be hard to hear. It's a weird like uh, echoing thing, but yeah, he killed it. Yeah, that he was, dominated. That was crazy. It was crazy. It was It was the first time that I kind of saw him yeah. um, playing footy here and I was like, yeah, this he bloke sh- he is... shut up. He shut everyone up. Oh, right mate. I, it, it was actually funny because I'm a diehard Don's fan and I couldn't even hate the bloke because he was just kicking sick goals. Yeah. And then just like, I was like, it's actually sick to watch. Yeah. Because like, I think that he adds a little bit more to the game. What What do you reckon about players being able to add a little bit more personality to the game? Or do you kind of like it a bit more just stay in your lane? No, nah, I think like, again, like everyone can do whatever they want really. The game's changed a lot. Like I've been talking to a few older players and they're like, it took you a while to be yourself in a footy club. Yeah. Um, and that's everywhere really. A young player comes in and blokes kind of... Um, like put them down a bit but it's completely not like that um at all anymore so the afl environment just needs to embrace everyone yeah I think and so. like, embrace like people that are different and um if they're playing well and playing well and did you feel like the dons just opened you with open arms yeah they did welcomed you with open arms sorry definitely yeah, yeah they did and i can yeah i feel confident really confident in my second year first year still a bit but now i'm oh, just going in and just saying whatever i want <laughs> is that a worry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, my friend. Let's finish off the potty with the number one question that everybody wants to know. What are three successful habits that you employ into your life every day that has helped you get to the level of a footballer, of a person that you are? Oh, I'll do a, I'll do a footy one, mm-hmm. a performance one, and a mental one. How good... Have you been practicing these? No. That's good. All right. Talk to me. Okay. So footy. My, my footy one is uh, is doing... I've been actually watching Vision at mm-hmm. the moment and like watching like Das and Zach and pausing it just before they make a decision and trying to predict what they do. Wow. So it's probably giving away like... A, but I've been doing that um, and that just helped. And if they make a, the, like their decision and it's right, then I'm like, oh. I can make that one in that situation. Nice. And then if they do the wrong one, I'll and if I pick the right one, then it's, it's good for me. So I've been doing that. Um, and then, you know, you can do your extra touch and stuff like that, but the program's really well set up to improve. Um, men- Is that something that you would recommend younger players to do as well? Like yeah. actually study vision of... Sorry for cutting you off as well. Right. Study vision of yourself, of your, of your teammates. Someone um, you want to play like too. Yeah. Um, I think you need to realise what sort of player you want to be and then like kind of go after that. Not focus on too much, just like um, your strengths. 100%. Because yep. every, every AFL team has types of players, you know, like a small forward that's a tackle pressure. Yep. You know, like you've just got to find where your lane is and hone in on that weapon and try and model your game off that player. 100%. Yep. And performance would be like the three things we spoke about earlier um diet nutrition sleep i can track your calories nah i did for a little bit when i was injured but like i don't yeah um but like i feel like i've still got heaps to work on in that sense like everyone can keep improving but um 
yeah, I'm going to try really improve. I'm not all over these things, by the way. But That's right. None um, of us are, really. Those those three, for me, um, and just my habits in general, um, like going out, limited. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a different, like, it's actually a really hard one, and I get a lot of questions about how, how do you balance, you know, having a beer and, and then yeah. training hard. Do, does that motivate you kind of the next day or two or the next week to just train really, really hard after you had a few beers on a weekend? Through the off-season, if I had a few beers, I'd, I'd feel pretty guilty and then go and and smash out a session awesome but in season we're really structured like eight day break you can have a drink and seven day you can not do much and then mm. six day nothing at nothing. all so we're pretty we know what um you just got to stick to that um mental it, it, mental would be oh, i actually love my living arrangements at the moment living with a couple of mates um do they play footy oh like yeah one plays uh port melbourne vfl okay. but like he doesn't talk about footy when we're home i love that um and just like watch movies, go for walks, get coffee. Um, I have my my record player. I just chuck on and sit there and watch NBA. That's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm doing a little diploma too to get take my mind off it. But nice. um, that's really all. And yeah, I've been a great um, mind mind mindset mindset. <laughs> I think I've been that's a great key. mindset this year already, and ready to you know play some good footy. Yeah, and that's what you need to find and have that balance of people that are not adding stress to your life but taking it away 100 is so key so yep. i'm very lucky with my living arrangements that i'm surrounded by people that are very like-minded and and we all do similar sort of things so um yeah definitely finding that is is a key to um increasing your performance and your happiness as well good stuff mate gee whiz it's good smart yeah. ladies and gentlemen it's been an absolute pleasure having ben hobbs what's your do you have a nickname oh i do can you say yeah, I've got I've got a few Hobber, Hobbsy, Goblin. Goblin. Have you have you seen that on a few? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I d you know I I don't want to start calling you nicknames too nah, early. No, don't call me. You probably can't call me Goblin just yet. We'll, I'll call you Hobber. Yeah, call me Hobber. Yeah, yeah we'll work good. with Hobber. Yeah. It's absolute pleasure having Hobber on the show today, mate. Uh, good luck for the rest of the uh, or the start of the season. Um, hopefully, you get your body right, and um, I'm sure I'll see you uh, again very very soon. Thanks, mate. You too. All love.